Okay, so that's a poll. If you're just joining us, there's a poll up there just to try uh, while we wait for everyone else to join. See what you remember. Uh, it gets a little bit trickier now because we're talking about potential difference in a parallel circuit. So we're not talking about current, talking about potential difference. So it's, um, it's different. Um, and it's in a parallel circuit. Awesome. About 75% of you have voted. That's really good. Oh gosh, over 80%. This is looking pretty good. Few people are a little bit confused, but not to worry. A um, few people have clicked. This isn't the answer. No, really, it isn't. Don't click it. I'm afraid that's wrong. It does say so in the answer. Um, and there we go. Nearly everyone's voted. So I'm going to end that one now. It was the same in each branch. The potential difference is the same in each branch. So we were talking about current before. Current is the same in series. Parallel is the potential difference is the same in parallel. So that was a little bit different there. Um, so those were some of the things we were looking at before. Um, I think there's another quick question. No, that's fine. Right. So Ohm's law. Now we talked about this chap, um, Georg Ohm, uh, last time, and he was the guy that came up with the idea of resistance. Now he was an interesting guy. Well, I think he was, he was a science teacher himself. And he was obsessed with this new thing that had come out um, when he was teaching, made by a man called Mr. Volta. Yes, that's really where we get the word volts from. And Alessandro Volta had invented this little thing that he called an electrical cell. And Giorgio was playing with these electrical cells and finding it really exciting. And he noticed something about current. So we're just going to recap a little bit more about him and current and resistance. And then we're going to move on to talk about resistance a bit more. OK, so resistance is. So here's Ohm's law. This is actually his law. And his law says that the resistance in Ohm's is equal to the potential difference divided by the current or the potential difference given the symbol V is IR. V equals IR is how I remember it. It's, it's the easy way to remember it. V equals IR. And he said that this, is, this was always going to be true. This, this equation is the same every time. And he found that out because he, he was obsessed with playing with these little cells that Alessandra Volta had invented um, in his classroom. So he, like I said, he was a German science teacher uh, a couple of hundred years ago. Okay, so just move on from there. So you need to know this equation. You absolutely need to know this equation. And we've met it before. Okay, so that's Ohm's law and it's V equals IR is the easy way to remember it. Okay, and the resistance of a co component can be worked out using his law. Okay, if you want to find out what the resistance is, we can always use this. We can measure the potential difference, we measure the current, and that will allow us to work out its resistance, how much it's slowing the electrons down as they go through, because that's what resistance is. Now, last week I talked about that triangle, and a few people said that the triangle caused them a little bit of difficulty. Now, the reason why we use a formula triangle is it makes it really easy to rearrange it. So, if you look at that one, V, and down here was I, remember, and R. So you've got V, I, R. V equals I, R. And that's always how you arrange them. If you've got A equals B, C, A goes on top, B, C below. If you've got Q equals Z, Y, Q on top, Z, Y on the bottom. So whatever in front of the equals goes on the top, you put the other two things on the bottom. Then when you get given a sum and you need to work out how to do it, you just cover the thing you're trying to find out and do what's left. So for example, if you were trying to find current, which has the symbol I, you would cover I over here. So that hand is covering I, and that tells you, you need to divide V potential difference by R. I equals V over R. So we can use, this triangle to find out anything. If we were asked to find out what R is, put your finger over R, that means V divided by I. That's what it says over here. If you were trying to find out V, put your finger over V, I times R. 
So it, the triangle allows you to rearrange equations really quickly. And it's very helpful in exams and tests. To be able Hello, to sir. Hello. I've just got a question and this comes up all the time. So I was just going to answer it because it's a bit of a weird yep. one. Why are we using an I instead of a C? And it's because it comes from the symbol for current, which originates from a French, French phrase, which was intensity du courant or current intensity. OK, so that's why we've got an I, because it comes from a French um, language and it was used by a guy called Andre Marie Ampère. And that <laughs> should sound familiar to you all, Ampère. Um, and that's your answer to that one, in case you've ever wondered. Sorry, sir. I'm going to go. Oh, now. Absolutely, yeah, fantastic. That was really good. Um, and so you see, we've got the three people there that were involved in this. We've got Alessandra Volta, we've got uh, Ampere, and we've got Ohm. Were the actual people who came up with these things? And people often say, "Why are they given these ridiculous names?" Well, if you become a professional scientist and you discover or work something out, you're able to attach your name to it forever and ever. So that's what they've done and the, the guy that was working on current was French and so we're taking it from the French phrase. Now this law of ohms allows us to work out a few things so if we were trying to work out the resistance of something we could measure the potential difference across it and we could measure the current that's going through it the intensity of the current there you go I intensity of current that might make it easier to remember um, and we could plot that onto a graph and we would get a graph that looked a little bit like this. If we push the electrons harder, we give them more potential difference, we manage to get more of them to go round. That's a fairly straightforward idea, isn't it? We give them more push, more energy, that means more they go round faster and more of them go round. Potential difference goes up, current goes up. But this graph has got a nice straight line. This graph has got a nice straight line. So I'm going to try a couple of poles now. So the first one, why won't my, my trackpad suddenly gone? A bit funny. There we go. Right. So my first pole is actually just to see if you were paying attention a moment ago. So let's see if you can just remember what's the equation that links potential difference, current and resistance that we just talked about just now, a moment ago. We looked at the triangle, number on top, number below. Brilliant. It's going pretty well. Got about a quarter of you have voted. It's zooming up into the 90% correct. Absolutely fantastic. Just picture that triangle in your head if you're not sure. What was at top? What were the two things down the bottom? Are they in there? And remember, the thing at the top is the thing in front of equals. So we're doing pretty well. We're taking about 35 seconds to do that. So I'll give you another 10 maybe. Fantastic. Well, more than 80% of you voted and 80% of you got it right. It's V equals IR. Remember our triangle V equals IR down the bottom. OK, that's a triangle that you really want to try and remember for doing uh, studying electricity. I've got another one for you as well. So let's just have uh, another. Stop sharing. Right. Let's just have another look at the next one now. That's one about that graph there. That graph there shows potential difference going up and current going up. And we have a straight line running up here. And this is just me finding something out about what you know about graphs from maths. Which statement best describes that relationship? Is it a steep relationship, a proportional relationship, an increased relationship, or a direct relationship? One goes up the other goes up. How do we describe that relationship in maths and science? If you increase one, the other increases. And now we're very split. And this is just me finding out what you know. Nearly all of you have voted. Go for a guess. If you don't know, go for a guess. Let me just see what you think about this one. Uh, and nearly everyone's voted we're heading up to a minute and more than a third of you got that right uh, more than a third of you got that right so the answer is proportional the answer is proportional that's how we describe this relationship okay so we've got this straight line that runs up there and if you get a straight line it means that the two quantities current and voltage are 
potential difference. I missed one. I've gone through the slides and changed them all. And I missed one. The current and potential difference are proportional. What does that, what does proportional mean? Okay, what do we mean by proportional? If you double the, vol the, the potential difference, the current doubles. If you went along here and you went from one to two, this would go from two to four. Whatever number it was at, it would double as well. That's what we mean by proportional. And we always get a lovely straight line if the relationship is proportional. In fact, that was put into a law. And so it was Ohm's law. The current flowing through a wire is proportional to the potential difference across it, as long as you don't change the temperature. And this allowed him to come up with that equation because potential difference divided by current tells you the resistance. So working out the gradient of that line would have told you the resistance. So he said, the current is proportional to potential difference as long as you don't change the temperature. And that idea is very, very important. It's very, very important, as long as you don't change the temperature. So all I wanted you to take away from this slide was the idea that the relationship is proportional and that that means that if you double one, you double the other and it gives you a straight line. That's the only thing you need to remember from this slide. That's all I want you to be able to remember. So here is a, um, a question we had before. Okay, here is a question that we had before. And just before we go any further, this isn't about the sums this time, it's about the circuit diagram. Now, you should have in your head that you know what these things are. That that's a battery of cells and it has in fact got two cells in it. These are light bulbs and we have one, two, three light bulbs here in series because they're connected one after the other and that that is an ammeter because it's got an A in it and this is a voltmeter, measures potential difference in volts and it's over here connected in parallel. Now, we said we can work out the resistance of anything by knowing the current through it and the voltage across it. And there's an important rule here. When we connect an ammeter in a circuit to find out the current, we always, always put it in series because the current in series is the same. We always, always put it in series because our current is going to be the same the whole way around. When we connect a voltmeter, we always, always put it in parallel because potential difference in parallel is the same. So we're going to get the right reading on both of these. There are some other reasons, but that's something you have to remember. You must always remember voltmeters connected in parallel, ammeters connected in series. Super important. Now, um, we're going to think about three different electrical components. Okay, we're going to think about three different simple electrical components. We're going to talk about three. We're going to talk about a diode, and that's got a symbol. It was on the list of symbols I think I gave you before, and it only lets current flow in one direction. We're going to look at something else, a light dependent resistor. Now, some of you have probably got some of these at home. So as the light intensity goes up, so as it gets brighter, the resistance goes down. And we can use these to do things like some of you might have got um, those. I've got one in my garden. I'm pointing out the window, a little solar powered light that during the day it's got solar cell on the top. And when it gets dark at night, it turns on the light and that light goes off again when it gets bright again in the day. And we can use those to do that. And also a thermistor. Now, thermistors, we definitely you definitely all have a thermistor at home because the thermistor is therm as in thermal to do with temperature and it's a resistor that changes with temperature and you've got one in your fridge and your freezer so i was sitting in my kitchen earlier today and i was working away and my freezer went click and then started to make a whirring noise and if you've ever sat in your kitchen or wherever you keep your fridge and freezer you will notice that that happens every now and again made a whir for a while then it went click and it stopped and what happened was the temperature inside was rising the thermistor changed the resistance Okay, because the temperature was going up, so the resistance went down, it turned on the circuit because the resistance had dropped and it made it colder and colder and colder. And then the temperature got colder, so the temperature dropped, the resistance went back up again and it switched it off again. Fantastic. So we've got temperature sensor. They're easy to remember because they're a 
a rectangle with what looks like an ice hockey stick through it. And ice hockey is only played in the cold and thermistors work in fridges and freezers. So they're my favorite for remembering. Now, um, let's see if you're all paying lots of attention just now. Let's see if I can get this to the poll to reappear. So now I'm looking for, uh, no, that's not the right one. Let's try the next one. Fantastic. Okay. Let's see if you can remember from a moment ago how we connect a voltmeter. If I had a circuit and I wanted to measure um, the voltage, the power, potential difference across something, how would I connect it with that something? Do I connect it in series with that something? Do I connect it in parallel with that something? Or is it just important that I use wires or that I'm careful? What are we going to do? Hello. Sorry. Um, a few questions about keeping temperature constant going back to the graph. So mm -hmm. I've answered them, but I thought if there's a few, that means there's probably quite a few wondering why it has to be Excellent. constant. Thank you very much, Miss. I'm gonna. I'm just about to talk about the uh, potential difference and current in a light bulb. So hopefully it, it will get a little bit clearer for people when I do that. Right. We've taken a minute there. Most people have voted and most of you have got that correct that it was in parallel. We always connect voltmeters in parallel. OK, so well done. Few people answering with wires. That is true. We do connect them with wires. That's absolutely correct. And maybe I should have picked a different one there to do that. So let's talk about these three different components. And this is coming back to that thing about temperature being constant. Why does that matter? Well, let's have a little think about what electricity actually is. We've got a wire. Here we go. I have a wire. This was the wire that a moment ago was uh, allowing my laptop to be plugged into the, to, to the mains. Okay. And in here, I've got some metal and you've studied atoms and ions. So in here, the electrons are delocalized. They're free to move up and down the wire. And we apply a charge and they move, but they've got to get past the great big metal ions that are in there making up the copper wire inside. OK, so just remember that electrons going through the wire, but they're having to get past the ions, which are the atoms that the electrons have come off. So atoms without electrons, ions with the electrons trying to get past. Now, you probably in year seven drew some diagrams of solids, liquids and gases. And the solid had them all arranged in nice, neat lines. The liquids had them moving a little bit and the gases had them zooming around. So if you have those two ideas in your head, electrons toddling along down a wire, having to get past the ions and those three states of matter, just have that idea in your head for a minute and we'll move on. And it might make sense. So here's our diode. A diode only lets things go in one direction and that's its symbol. And there is that arrow shows you the direction it will let the electrons go. So the electrons can go that way. If they try and get back the other way, they can't come back because it stops them from doing it. This one down here, you might remember because this is the ice hockey stick. So that's a thermistor ice hockey stick. And this one down here is a light dependent resistor. And in, ele in drawing electrical circuits, anywhere where you see arrows like this above not actually touching but above it it's either light coming in light dependent or light going out light emitting it's to do with light so you can see that the symbol for a resistor is this rectangle light dependent resistor thermistor which is a thermal resistor and this is a type of resistor as well so resistors are all boxes to make it light dependent we've got a circle with arrows to make it temperature dependent We've got an ice hockey stick, so that's a thermistor. And this one up here, you've got tons of these. So um, on my phone, so if I hold my phone up there on my phone, that's one of these. I can turn my volume up and down. I can turn the brightness on this screen up and down. And they are all variable resistors. So I can change the resistance in my laptop and that changes how much current flows to my screen and it makes it dimmer or brighter. I can turn the resistance down on my phone and that means more sound comes out of the speaker because more current can flow, okay? My thermistor, I talked about how they work already. The temperature starts to rise in my fridge, so the resistance goes down, more current can flow and it turns on the pump at the back that's making it nice and cold. 
So we're going to talk about these symbols and what their um, graphs might look like. So one of the things that I want you to do is to show this relationship yourself. Now, it's quite difficult to plot a graph at home. I know that most of you aren't going to have a piece of graph paper. So you might have to do one of two things. You can either sketch this graph out on an ordinary piece of paper, or you can try doing it in Google Sheets or in um, Google Slides. But what you need to remember are that you have to go up in even numbers. So you don't just write these numbers down. This is nice and even. So along the bottom, you could go half naught, and then you could do one centimeter for half, another centimeter, another centimeter using a ruler, and you could measure that out. But here we can't just write 0 0.6, 0 point, 1.1, and so on up the side. We would have to write naught, half, one, one and a half, the same as the other side, but then plot these points on. So there's going to be a little bit of guessing. But I'd like you to have a look at what those results would look like. <clears throat> by trying to sketch a graph. It's quite a difficult thing to do. And I know I'm asking you to do something really difficult now, but I'd like to see what you make of it, okay? Because you're not gonna have graph paper at home. If you want to try it with graph paper, you can usually, if you search on Google, printable graph paper, find graph paper that you can get to come out of a printer, and then you'd be able to do it exactly as if you were in school. And we'll pre I appreciate not everyone will be able to do that. So then you would need to try and draw it out yourself. So this is how we would do this in school. We would get our cell and we would put it there and then we'd have our ammeter in series because ammeters get connected in series. There's a resistor or whatever it is we're trying to measure the um, resistance of. So let's say this resistor, we wanted to know what its resistance was and we connect the voltmeter in parallel. And we're using the variable resistor so that we can change the setting and get uh, the right Get, get it working so that we've got the right uh, range on here and we plot that graph. Okay, so that's just a little bit of practice in graph plotting if you are able to do that at home. If you're not, don't worry. So now here's what right back at the beginning I showed you a current voltage graph. So you don't need to worry about if you want the bottom corner. So I just showed you this bit down here. We have, remember intensity of current and potential difference V down the bottom. And as potential difference went up, current went up because it was proportional if I kept the temperature the same. And here's where that becomes important. So if I do the first one, that was my wire kept at the right temperature. So if I made my potential difference go up, my intensity of current went up, and even if I made my potential difference go the other way, because I could go either way around the circuit, my current would go up in, in negative numbers in exactly the same way. So that would work absolutely fine at the same temperature, okay? So that's a resistor that stays at the right temperature or a wire at the right temperature. But if I try something different, let's say I did that. Now, this one, as my potential difference is going up, my intensity of current is going up, but a bit more than doubling. And then all of a sudden, even though my potential difference is going up, I'm not getting much more current. This is a light bulb. Now, anyone who has been foolish enough to touch a light bulb when it is on will know that it gets quite hot. Even energy saving light bulbs that are now much, much more common than the old fashioned filament ones get, can get really hot. And that changes the resistance. So as the light bulb, as more potential difference goes, you get more current. And as the current gets, more and more um, higher and higher through the filament, all of those little electrons are trying to get past all of those ions and they're squishing through and they're squishing through and pushing their way through and they're making it get hot. And things that are hot start to vibrate. Remember those things that I talked about from year seven, the blocks of um, atoms making up a solid moving around for liquid. And we all know that the solid one started to vibrate and vibrate and vibrate till it melted. Well, they all start vibrating 
and the electrons find it harder and harder to get past them because it would be if you imagine walking around the corridors if everyone walks in nice straight lines it's really easy but if you had year 11 walking from side to side of the corridor all of a sudden it would be much harder to get past so as a wire gets hotter and hotter and hotter all of those ions start to vibrate and the electrons can't get past so the resistance increases and that gives us that little curve okay and that's a light bulb and then the next one is nice and easy okay because the current only goes through it in one direction so you increase the potential difference and the current goes up and that's lovely if you try and do it the other way nothing happens and that's a diode and that's what a diode does but the one that was important here was the bulb because as the temperature goes up the particles the ions start to vibrate and that makes it harder for the electrons to get past so this starts to curve over at the end so it's a little bit different okay so that's current voltage graphs. We've got our standard one that shows it's a proportional relationship. And the one that's different, that tells us what happens when it's not at a fixed temperature is over here. If we change the temperature, because the ions start to vibrate, we've got these electrons really struggling to get past, which is why we need to keep the temperature the same for it to be proportional. So now we need to talk a little bit about um how we work out resistance so here's a description of that electricity in wires is a flow of electrons as the electrons move along the wire they collide with the metal atoms or ions these collisions make them vibrate even more which makes it hotter which makes it even harder for it to get past okay and resistance is a measure of how much it tries to stop it passing so the hotter it is the more resistance it's going to have a little description of it um, here are some quick questions to work out. Okay, so you uh, need to go through these when you go through the slides and just work out the answers to these. You've got the, um, the equation, it's further back in the slides. You need to use that to work out the answer to these equations. I've even given it there. That's a little bit kind. And another one that you need to work out a little bit later on. Okay, but now we're going to look at how we work out the resistance of more than one resistor at once so if we only had one there and it said four ohms the resistance of this circuit would be four ohms that's nice and easy if we put them in series it's quite simple we just add them up okay so just to make sure that you haven't fallen asleep right now i am going to get a, a pole let's see if i've got the right one yes i have so what is the resistance of that circuit there following that rule what's the resistance of that circuit there good loads of people are wide awake fantastic not everyone's wide awake though total resistance r1 plus r2 you add them up okay but only about half of you have voted some people have clearly fallen asleep i'm clearly being a bit boring today so i've talked about g or gome we've talked about v equals ir proportional relationship except when it's hot and that gives us our curve in a bulb we're going to practice some V equals IR questions because I've left you two there to do on your own. And then we're going to do some resistance questions. So I'm going to end that. Most people have done it. About 70% of you have done it. That was nearly a minute. And the right answer was six. Okay, the right answer was six because in series, we just add up all of the resistances. So we've got four and two. So that is six. So let's try another one then. Okay. Let's try another one. Whoop, let's see if I can get my page to work. Let's try that one. Okay, so if you're paying attention just now, shouldn't be too tricky because there you are. You've got two resistors and our rule is in and we're off. And this is much better. Fantastic. We've got the rule. We're paying attention this time. Uh, nearly half of you have voted. Almost everyone has got this correct. 97% correct, about half of you have voted. Keep going, okay? Um, just to okay. remind you guys, the polls are anonymous, so we don't know who voted for what, so. Oh no, absolutely, can't see your name, just see how many people got it right. Thank you, miss, that was really important. These people are worried about answering in case people see them get it wrong. I have no idea who it is who's got it wrong. The only person who knows whether you got it right or wrong is you. Okay, it just gives me an idea of how many people 
got it right, which really helps. So that's coming up to a minute now. There's a few people left. If you want to do it, I'm going to give you another five seconds or so to click on it. Three, two, one. And the right answer was 40. And about 85% of you got that right. So that's fantastic. We just add them up. Six plus 34 is 40. Brilliant. Excellent. Right. Now, um, I'm going to talk about resistors in, in parallel. Unless this isn't for everyone who's listening now. So some of you might want to turn your brains off for a moment. This is for those students who often get maybe mastery when they're doing tests at high le high um sorry high uh, grades when they're doing tests you're working at sort of level seven and above you're maybe thinking you might be a triple science student next year i'm going to talk about that in a minute um how we work out resistance in parallel now the thing is one of the rules is whatever number you come up with has to be less than your lowest resistor because resistance goes down in parallel because the electrons have got a choice they can go in two different ways that would be a little bit like if it was uh, difficult to get down the corridor because there were loads of year 11s in the way but you could go down the bottom corridor or the top corridor it's easier for you to get through because you've got two different paths to choose. If I had to get the whole of year eight along the corridor, but, but 140 of you could go down the bottom corridor, 140 over the top, you would get to the other end quicker because you wouldn't all been trying to shove past year 11 at the same time and it would be easier. I'm not gonna get you to work this one out now. So what we would do is four times two. So we would have eight divided by six. That would be how we work that one out. Four times two divided by four plus two, so eight divided by six. And we do the same here. Try these questions if you know that I, when I describe students who do particularly well at science, I'd like you to try these questions. The rules are there for you to follow. Try and work those out. Okay. Uh, so just a oh. quick question. Uh, will yep. more go through the two ohms one? So I think you had a picture with two resistors. Yep. Would more current, I think they mean, go through the two ohms? Absolutely. That's a really, really, really good question. Fantastic. And you're, you're extending this even further than I was going to. And the answer is yes. More current will flow down the one that is easier for it to get through. So it will go down the easier the easier route in the same way as if we had 100 year 11s in one corridor and 10 in another and you had to go along one of the corridors more of you would choose the one with only 10 year 11s in it because it's easier to get through and you'll be able to get past quicker okay so a really really good question okay so there are some questions here at the end um, that ask you multiple choice you just highlight the one that you want to be the right answer okay so I've got a symbol there let me just see who's been paying uh, lots of attention to me as we go through this um, I think this is the one that I want okay fantastic so there's a symbol I'd like to know what that symbol is. There are your choices. Is it a voltmeter? Is it a variable resistor? Is it a light dependent resistor? Or is it a thermistor? Which is a type of resistor. Oh, this is going well. Lots of you pay lots of attention. I'm very pleased. Now I know you pay attention because I, I mark the, myself and Miss wants to mark the work for nearly half of year eight between us because we've got two classes each and we can see that you're doing really well with this and, and year eight as a, as a year group you're really well engaged um, and I'm very very pleased that you're taking part in these things. Um, we've got nearly everybody's voted if you haven't and you really want to go do it now because I'm going to end it in a minute and obviously I didn't expect you to remember that from the beginning, but some people have remembered what I said about an ice hockey stick, and that means it's related to temperature, and that they've put down it was a thermistor. Absolutely fantastic. Most of you got that right. So what you do when you go through these multiple choice questions is you just highlight the one that you want and change it to a different color. Don't change it to black, because we won't be able to see it. Okay, so your teachers can mark it. And there's a few more, okay? Um, there are some difficult ones. So this is um, one about parallel circuits, asking you to work that out. And there's a few there about Ohm's law as well. Now, 
So there's only a couple of questions on there. So you might be thinking, well, what am I going to do? I've, I'm aware I've taken more than half an hour, so I'm just going to show you this. Okay, so here is a, um, a Google form that's going to be in your classroom that has got some questions about um, some of the things that we have just done. It's a nice, short Google form. The reason that I'm showing you is that in two weeks time after the webinar, I'm going to set a much longer Google form just to find out what you can remember from all of the electrical circuits work that we've done in webinars. Now, I need to stress a few things. The real point of it is for you to find out what you have remembered. It's for you to be able to say, look at that, I can remember half three quarters most of what we've done with circuits okay it's for you i am not nor are any of your teachers going to use it for anything to do with setting it will not change what set you are in even if you get a hundred percent sorry because it's not fair because people are learning at home it is for you to find out what you have done it will help us as well because if we know everyone can remember all of the symbols we won't go back over that in year nine maybe quite as much if we know no one can work out ser uh, resistance in series we'll all know we do need to go back over that so don't cheat and look it up on on the internet so this week there are some questions on the slides for you and then there is this okay and this will give you a nice clear mark this is short this will only take 15 20 minutes okay this won't take very long so there are two things neither of those things will take you the whole amount of time that you would have had science for but you need to start revising. You need to start getting the webinar slides. You should have got three sets now, and you need to get them out and start trying to remember things. Now, how do you do that? My favorite is you write out the thing you're trying to remember. Perhaps you're trying to remember what a series circuit looks like. Perhaps you're trying to remember the circuit symbols. Perhaps you're trying to remember V equals IR. And you write it down and explain it on a piece of paper or a piece of card, and you read it, and then you don't just make the flashcards, you turn the flashcard over and you try and write it out again from memory. And you write it out and then you look at your flashcard and see how much of it did I get right. And then you do that again. And then you leave it for a day and you come back to it. So you have got a couple of hours of science every week. So you're gonna, you've watched this webinar, you're gonna try those questions that probably won't take you very long. And the rest of your time, I'd like to suggest that you spend maybe half an hour to 40 minutes revising circuits. Next lesson, webinar, I'm going to do some revision of the whole thing. I'm going to have lots of polls to help you test your revision. And then after that, I'll do some final revision and then I'll set you a Google test. Now, before I get asked the same questions over and over again, because I do, Let's talk about, people keep asking about setting for next year, okay? We haven't finished doing it. We're not doing it on anything that you did in lockdown. It's all based on things that happened before, and it's a mixture of how you did in tests, but also how your teachers tell me you're doing. Because some people didn't get great test scores, but their teachers said, oh, but they should have. They were working really well and they just had a bad test. So we put all of that information together and put it in. One of the things that people are most interested in is when will I find out I'm doing triple science? Now, we don't really choose who's doing triple science till the end of year 10, but lots of people call themselves the triple science class because they're in uh, a top set. Your year group is so good at science and so enthusiastic about science. We are actually going to have two classes where we're going to be deliberately teaching everyone triple science instead of one on each side of the year. That's different from previous years, but that is re a reflection of how good so many of you are at science. So it's very likely that if you're someone who wants to be there, that you're going to be there or you're going to be able to be there later on. I thought I'd just add that because it's a question I keep getting asked. Right, Miss, are there any other questions that I need to answer at the end? No, it's been quite quiet today. Um, I've got something. Um, a while ago with my classes,